In the next part of discrete math, we're going to talk about all about relations, which are mathematical ways to encode relationships between sets. And since one might say that mathematics is all about relationships, uh, these are going to be extremely applicable. In fact, in this section, we're going to kind of revisit all of the stuff we've covered. Uh, we're going to go back to logic. We're going to go back to set theory. Uh, we're going to go back to uh, combinatorics. We're basically going to see a little bit of everything in this last unit of discrete math. Um, so before we talk about relations, we're going to develop a tool that's going to help us understand them better, something called a Boolean matrix. Uh, now in general, a matrix is a rectangular array of information whose entries uh, are things we can do some algebra with. Uh, typically, if you've seen matrices before, you've seen them over the set of real numbers, uh, and you'll also encounter that in your linear algebra class if you go on to take that. Real number matrices encode systems of linear equations and linear transformations which are uh, special types of functions in space. Um, they keep lines, lines, and planes, planes. Uh, in the study of relations, we are going to be interested in matrices whose entries are objects called bits. So a bit is an element, 0 or 1, endowed with three operations. We call these operations join, meet, and complement. These symbols should look familiar to you, and it's going to turn out that these operations behave the same way. Uh, so if I've got two bits, A and B, then this table tells you what A join B is going to be, A meet B is going to be, and the complement of A is going to be. Uh, so we can see that A join B is equal to 1 unless both A and B is 0. This looks a lot like the OR operator from logic. I'm going to put quotation marks around the word OR because it's only OR when it's implemented in logic. Everywhere else it's called JOIN. The MEET operation is defined to be 1 only when both A and B are 1, in which case we kind of consider the MEET operation to be kind of like AND. And then finally, the complement of A is defined to be whichever bit A is not. So if A is 0, A complement is going to be 1. If A is 1, A complement is going to be 0. In that sense, the complement operation kind of looks like the word not from logic. A Boolean algebra is any set curly A with these operations featuring a minimum element called 0 and a maximum element called 1, where any time you meet with 1, you get back uh, whatever element you met with one, uh, and whenever you meet an element with zero, you get back zero for all elements A in the set. Uh, other examples of Boolean algebras include logical statements and the power set of any set. So that reflects the fact that you feel like you've seen these operations before. So let's see a couple of examples. Zero, meet one is going to be zero. Remember zero is kind of like false here, one is kind of like true here. Uh, so if you had a sentence that was true and false, you'd get back false. So zero meet one is zero. We can write down more complicated statements. Zero join the complement of one meet zero. Well, let's do this from the inside out. One meet zero, we just saw is zero. The complement of zero is one. and 0 join 1 is 1. We can also solve equations in bits. So let's have the equation x join x meet 1 is equal to 1. All right, well, if x can either be 0 or 1, anything join itself is itself. You might remember that from logic, or you can think about it this way. 0 join 0 is going to be 0, and 1 join 1 is going to be 1. Therefore, when we join anything with itself, we just get that object back. So we have x meet 1. All right, well, let's think about it. Uh, if x is 0 then 0 meet 1 is going to be 0. If x is 1, then 1 meet 1 is going to be 1. So anything meet 1 is just itself. 
So that tells us that x has to be 1. That's the solution to that equation. Now that we've defined bits, we can formally define a Boolean matrix, or just generally a matrix, and then the only ones we're going to talk about are going to be Boolean matrices. So a matrix is a rectangular array of data, but data is called its entries. An M by N matrix is a matrix that has M rows and N columns. When we write the notation A is equal to square brackets little a i j, that tells us that capital A is a matrix whose entry in the ith row and the jth column is denoted by little a sub i j. When we write a matrix, we write it like this, as this kind of array, and a Boolean matrix is one whose entries are all bits. So let's see an example where we kind of tease out all that notation. Uh, we're going to consider the matrix A. Zero one zero 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 one one zero zero. A is a three by three matrix because it has three rows and three columns. The element little a one two refers to the element that is in the first row of A and the second column. We can see that that element is a 1. The other elements that are 1's are A2, 3 and A3, 1. All other entries are 0. There are some special matrices we're going to find useful as we start talking about relations. A square matrix is an m by n matrix where m is equal to n. In other words, a square matrix has the same number of rows as it does columns. Uh, we just saw a square matrix. We just wrote it down. It was 0, 1, 0, uh, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. This is a square matrix because it has the same number of rows as it does columns. Now, among square matrices, we have two other kinds of special matrices. A diagonal entry of a matrix is an entry where the row and column index are the same. So, for example, on the matrix we just wrote down, this 0, this 0, and this 0, A11, A22, and A33 are the diagonal entries. A matrix where the only non-zero entries occur on the diagonal is called a diagonal matrix. Let's check out one of those. I'm going to make it 3 by 3 again. I have to put a 0 everywhere but the diagonal in order for this to be a diagonal matrix, but then once I'm on the diagonal I can put down whatever I want. So let's have 1, 0, 1. That's a diagonal matrix. Uh, and then finally, the identity matrix uh, on N is the N by N matrix where all the diagonal entries are 1 and all the other entries are 0. So I3 is the matrix 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 is the 3 by 3 identity matrix. So we say A identity matrix because there's one for every dimension. For example, I5 is the matrix uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. That's the 5 by 5 identity matrix.